What is goody, everybody? Now, this is one of a really good news today, and, or I should say tonight, and John Wall is essentially going to be a Clipper. So, the man John Wall, he got a buyout, and then he's essentially planning to become a Clipper, and essentially the Clippers don't want to give up anything, which is, that is gorgeous, and I am pretty happy about that. Because John Wall, when he's at his peak, he has a talent. He's lightning quick. He's pretty athletic. He's a pretty good scorer, good playmaker. He's that so-called true point guard that some Clippers fans would want. So it definitely satisfies a lot of a lot of the Clippers' needs. And then, like my opinion on John Wall, like I was pretty cool with getting him, but not from a trade for sure. Like. A lot of people last year, they were, like, overreacting and they're throwing really stupid, dumb trades. Like, trading Luke Kennard, Marcus Morris, Terrence Mann for freaking John Wall. Like, bruh, that's just a stupid trade whatsoever. But but when we get from a buyout, though, it's different because you have nothing really to lose. John Wall, he's he still be a really good role player, point guard, and Clippers don't want to do anything too ridiculous to get him. And... That could, that could be a really good impact for the Clippers. Now, let's go get to my list and list like the pros and cons of officially acquiring the man, John Wall. Alright, so pretty much my number one biggest pros is Reggie Jackson could finally get a breather. So, Reggie Jackson, we don't have to worry this guy about getting 40 minutes a game and everything like that. And Reggie could definitely... Definitely, definitely, definitely would not tire out like every single game. So, John Wall, he's either going to be a starter or he'll be that the sixth man off the bench. We'll see how Tyron Lue uses him. So, that is one big, big, big pro. And John Wall, like, instead of just Reggie playing all straight up 40 minutes a game, maybe Reggie could play like 30 minutes a game or... Or, yeah, essentially 30 minutes a game and then Reg and John Wall could come in at times just give him the breather... And he would throw some dimes. And who knows, John Wall could be the starter and Reggie could be the sixth man. You never know. And, yeah, Wall would just be diamond. He would just be driving coast to coast, getting the baskets and everything, getting the buckets, having some nice athleticism, getting some really good dunks. So that is one big pro. Reggie Jackson gets the nice, well-deserved breather. Now, number two. Um, the Clippers are less li less likely to act like do anything stupid like trading Brandon Boston Jr. Now, ever since the Clippers fell out like in the playing tournament, I've I've been seeing a lot of Clippers fans on social media, including YouTube or or etc. They be they be overreacting like crazy like i'd be hearing them they want to trade brandon boston jr for freaking malcolm brogdon like that is one of the worst trades i could ever think of like what are you thinking about trading brandon boston jr for malcolm brogdon or even worse some dude i saw on youtube he said he want to trade brandon boston jr for freaking kemba walker Boy, if the Clippers actually did that, I would give our front office a right, a beautiful slap in the face. I'd be arrested for manslaughter if that happens, to be honest. Like, bro. And let's just make it clear for everybody watching this video. Brandon Boston Jr. is off limits no matter what. And I'll tell you. How against I am training Brandon Boston Jr. I would much rather let the Los Angeles Lakers get a free third star like a Bradley Beal or a Kyrie Irving rather than to trade Brandon Boston Jr. That guy is not going anywhere and he's going to dominate the league for a little while. For actually a long time because... That man is special, bro. We're not. No, I am not trading Brandon Boston Jr. No matter what, and the Clippers should should keep Jay Scrub as well too. I hear like some top rumors that oh, Clippers may, may let Jay Scrub walk or something like that. So, 
if the Clippers dare to let J. Scrub walk, I'm going to be pretty mad if I'm being honest with you. Because both of them, they have the beautiful upside. But, but yeah, essentially, don't trade Brandon Boston Jr. Just don't even try to think about it. All right, now some of the Clippers fans I'm seeing on social media want to trade Brandon Boston Jr. for Miles Turner's Turner. I mean, Turner, I liked them for a while. Like, as soon as when the Clippers collapsed in the bubble, I was a big fan of trading Montrez Hero for Miles Turner because he's a good three point shooter and he's, I guess, a pretty good rim protector. But, like, think about it. Is he worth Brandon Boston Jr.? Heck to the no. I would not trade Brandon Boston Jr., even for Carl Anthony Towns first and foremost, or even Joel Embiid. Nope. Brandon Boston Jr. is just not going nowhere. Peer re id. Simple as that. Simple as that. And then, okay, now I got way too off topic with my second one, but I just want to push that agenda real clear. So let's get to our third option. I mean, the third, third pro, my bad. Um, he essentially has the talent and uh, he could be a pretty good locker room presence. So, John Wall, yes, accolade, been like five time all star at least. One of the fastest players, very athletic. He's a really good playmaker. Like, even like when Tom was with those Rockets, he was like averaging six assists per game, which is pretty solid. And, assumingly, he could kind of mentor guys like Jason Preston to become like a pretty good point guard or essentially any of our other young guys. Like, let's just say, hey, Brandon Boston Jr. just want to learn how to play make. John Wall can teach him how to do that, teach him how to bulk up. Teach him how to do just this and that. Simple as that. Number four. He had like one of the most blocks that is under, that is 6 tree or under. <coughs> so, John Wall, back in the day, he was a defensive hound. Like, he, he could jump real good and he would definitely got a lot of swats. Like, he has the big body frame, and if he would try to get a basket, John Wall would just be out flying out of nowhere, just swat that bad boy all the way to Australia. Just boom, block that bad boy. And then number five um, is just kind of related to some of the other ones, but if John Wall hits his peaks, scary hours. Scary hours, man. If he really goes back to the Wizards, John Wall. Oh my goodness. Goodbye. Goodbye to all the other teams, man. Goodbye. Good, good, goodbye. And the Clippers don't really have anything to lose. We just got them just off of signing. Not off of, you know, doing some trades. We essentially got John Wall. Beautiful. Beautiful. Alright. Let's get to the cons. So... Number one is, will he be the same? So, is John Wall going to be this good player who will essentially help the Clippers? Or would he just be like a washed up player, kind of like how Russell Westbrook was playing with the Houston, with the Los Angeles Lakers? Would he be shooting the worst bricks in history? Would he be just randomly casually airballing? Would he just, or would he be like, you know, like a Blake Griffin, just not play at all? Would he be just, oh, Hurt every time you just randomly just walk. Um, so that's that. That's a big con because he did have like an Achilles injuries, and Achilles are one of the worst injuries you can ever think of. But I'm gonna just hop back to the pro, and the pro is the Clippers are really good for reviving careers. Like they revived Nick Batum's career. Like people thought Batum was a scrub. Well, not a scrub. Um, he was like a bum, like, Phil thought Batum was trash and everything, and all of a sudden he came to the Clippers, man, he just showed how important he was, a really good defender and a really good playmaker, and another example, Reggie Jackson, Reggie Jackson, he was just, he was like literally like almost out of the league, then Reggie Jackson, he literally went borderline all-star mode, just got the buckets, solid playmaker, Defense even improved as well. Reggie, man, Mr. June, shout out to you. And 
more examples. Robert Covington recently. Robert Covington, he supposedly suffered from depression, and he almost quit the NBA too. But guess what? The Clippers made him to be a really key power forward that would help the Clippers tremendously down the line. So the Clippers are pretty good at reviving careers. So I believe they could probably make the impact for a guy like John Wall. Like he's controlled. He would not, you know, do anything too maniac. Like he doesn't. He may or may not have the ego, which is, I doubt he has the ego because, like, you know, I mean, he's been injured for a while, so what can he, he really do? Is he just going to act like Russell Westbrook and be entitled? I say that's very unlikely. Okay, number two. The con is shooting isn't the best. Like, he's not like, oh, just going to pull up, just splash a three. His John Wall is like 31% from a three when he was like, with the Houston Rockets, so that was a pretty bad percentage. Like, I'm not gonna lie, but but will John Wall shoot like the worst bricks in the world just randomly just boom clank clank? Hopefully not. Hopefully not. But again, like the Clippers are pretty good in keeping players like that in check, so I mean but I mean like honestly, like the peak John Wall, like, his shooting was not so bad. It was all, at least always, like, in his 30s. Like, his peak was, like, well, like, 37% from the three, which is actually pretty, like, decent for, like, a point guard. And thing is, when John Wall's, like, more, ca- like, catch-and-shoot threes, like, when he's wide open, he would actually not really brick that bad. Like, like, like essentially, like, I don't remember seeing a John Wall hot compilation of him throwing the worst bricks or worst air balls ever. Like, if you do, please correct me and please send me a video. But, but at the moment, I don't recall seeing that. I've seen like Russell Westbrook worst bricks. I've seen Shaquille O'Neal worst bricks. I've seen um, Joakim Noah's worst bricks. I've seen. Um, I mean. Yeah, th- those are just a play examples, but I don't remember seeing John Wallworth's break. So, if he doesn't have, like, a compilation highlight like that, shouldn't be, like, too, 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 too bad. I mean, of course, he's not whatsoever good at three-point shooting, but who knows? Maybe the Clippers could make him a good three-point shooter. And then, number three, um, he could be turnover prone to a certain extent. Like, he did average, like, 3.5 turnovers a game, which is... That could definitely be worked on. That could definitely be trimmed up to like more like two, because he is the point guard, and you know, and the Clippers deal with a lot of turnovers a decent amount of times. And John Wall, like, I mean, who who knows if he if he controls the turnover, he'd be a pretty pretty good solid player. Like, um, but yeah, that's just one of the weaknesses. Like, it's not like Russell Westbrook bad, but, like, Russell Westbrook, by the way, I didn't say Westbrook, I don't want to, like, throw in, this, like, too much slander at this moment, but, but, yeah, he's not Russell Westbrook bad in turnovers, like, because Russell Westbrook is, like, 4.8 turnovers per game, which is, that is actually pretty, pretty, like, alarming, to say the least, and John Moore turnovers, like, 3.5, which is still, like, definitely needs to be trimmed down, but, again, like, for example, Russell, John Wall worst bricks compilation. Like I don't remember seeing a highlight like that. Maybe I could easily be wrong, but I, but for John Wall, I don't remember, I don't remember seeing John Wall's worst turnover moments like ever. Like it's pretty minimal. Um, but yeah, that's essentially like the pros and cons on my list that I, that I kind of just jot down to help me just throw out, throw out some of my takes. And then I'll just add, throw on some add-ons as well, too, that I didn't put on the list. But So first, another con is he can maybe be, like, stunning the growth of Jason Preston or, let's just say, Xavier Moon if they pop off. But shouldn't be too much of a problem because, you know, Jason Preston and Xavier Moon does not have too much of the experience. So, like, shouldn't be too, too, too much of a problem. But it but it could potentially cause Jason Preston to be, like, a Brandon Boston Jr. or a Jay Scrub situation. But... Of course, it's not bad, like, whatsoever, because, I mean, Ray Jackson's the only, like, listed point guard. Like, the Clippers would just find ways to make things work, like, because we have a lot of versatile players. 
And I'll add another pro. Paul George is good friends with John Wall. So that would help a lot with the locker room camaraderie. So, But that relates to number three. And he could be a, a locker room presence. So he's definitely going to. Like um, he and John Wall could have some really good parties or something like that. So that is that. And but yeah, just let me know what you think about the John Wall acquisition. I mean, we got John Wall for free. What could we complain about? Like, of course, this is a easy, an easy A plus. Like nothing that could, like nothing you could really lose heavily. Like we just signed him. It's not like we made any like trades to get this guy. So can't complain. And have a beautiful, beautiful night, Clipper Nation. And as y'all know, peace.